Hey, what's up? We're back with another video. In the last several videos, I've opened up a whole bunch of sleeved boosters that I had purchased from Best Buy. This time, I decided I was going to weigh them, and so I weighed uh, several Lost Origin and Silver Tempest sleeved boosters that I had left over, and we're going to open them up. In this pile right here, we have 1.1 ounce weighed packs and over here as well with the Silver Tempest. And then we have one very small pile of 1.0 ounce, and then we have 1.0 here as well. And so already just in weighing these out, I feel like that you can't really weigh these out that well. All I know is that we have two piles where the packs are lighter weight by point one ounce and so we're going to open those up first and see if we get any hits out of them let's start out with silver tempest first the reason that i'm doing this is because i purchased so many sleeve boosters from best buy and i just did not have any luck with those sleeve boosters and yes that could be probability it could just be bad luck and getting just some, some sleeve boosters that don't have anything good in them but I feel like there might be something more to it there. Here we've got the Serena Reverse, and that's what we got out of this pack. So no hits out of uh, this lightweight pack. Now, being that so many of those weighed 1.1 ounce, I don't expect to have very scientific results here unless every single one of those has a hit in it, and that is the difference of the weight. I don't think you can tell with sleeve boosters. I think sleeve boosters have too much additional weight going on in them to notice and so and, and the idea is is that if i remember right the black ink on this particular code card is what contributes to the additional weight and then of course is the additional weight of the full art card having more ink and that's what contributes to the additional weight i just don't think that that is possible to detect when you have a sleeved booster because there's so much more there. There's more cardboard. You also throw in the fact that there could be slight differences in the amount of glue that is holding the sleeve booster closed. So I don't think you can really do this uh, type of trickery to see if you have anything out of these packs. But nonetheless, I mean, so far, we haven't got any hits out of our lighter weight packs, even though there were only three out of all of these Silver Tempests that were lighter weight, we haven't got any hits. So let's continue to go through this last Silver Tempest pack here and see if uh, if we have no hits, which we don't. We have a reverse there and that is it. And all of those code cards were white border. So at the two Lost Origin packs that I have that were lighter weight, these were packs that were definitely 1.0 on the scale and not 1.1. There were some packs that were like 1.0 and then after like a second, they went to 1.1, but I don't know. So we've got our first Lost Origin pack here. It is a white border code card. We could be seeing it. I, I did not think maybe that black ink contributes that much to the additional weight, but it could be a big issue. So we've got the Rhyhorn Reverse. And that is all that we got out of that pack. And now let's take a look at the last Lost Origin. Now, I am actually working on building out a Lost Origin set, which is one of the reasons that I bought a bunch of these sleeve boosters. The reason that I bought the Silver Tempest and the boosters that sleeve boosters that I bought in the previous. Oh, look, we've got a black border code card here on a lighter weight pack. So this may debunk the weight difference and can there be 0.1 of an ounce difference in the weight? I just don't really think so. I think we'd have to have a scale that uh, goes down in, you know, in the thousands to see the difference, not just in the tenths. I already see a card back there, so I already know that we're going to get a hit out of this pack. And so the weight is not something that we can predict here. We've got the Kyrim V out of that pack. So that's definitely not something that we can rely on is the packs being a little bit lighter or heavier. And I think with sleeve boosters, you can't really look at it that way because of the additional weight that you're gonna have with the glue and the cardboard. There's just too many extra factors there. So let's keep going. This, of course, now we are on the packs that were heavier. And so we have a black border uh, code card here. We're still on Lost Origin. And this is the packs that at least weigh 
1.1. I didn't have any that weighed any more than 1.1, so they were all pretty consistent. So let's continue, and I can already see, it looks like this pack's gonna have a double hit. I need to do a better job at holding these packs because I'm like dead giveaway. We got the Mew VMAX, awesome, that's a nice card. So definitely exciting there. And then a Rotom V. I have both of these cards already in my binder, but I'm not mad about having another Mew VMAX for sure from the Traders Gallery. Fantastic card. I'm not upset about that at all. But, you know, our first pack that we opened that weighed 1.1 had a double hit in it, and it had a code card with black uh, border, black ink code card. So there's a white border code card. So it's definitely not the code card that's contributing to that much extra weight. I really think it's the glue. My thoughts of maybe somebody weighed these and you know bought a whole bunch of these sleeve boosters, weighed them and returned all the ones that weighed less and kept all the ones that weighed more. Like so far, I have a lot more that weigh more than weigh less. And so I, I don't really know if that's something that somebody can do. Got Oh, we got the Spiritum here. We got another hit. We got the Spear Tomb, so awesome. We're doing okay here with the Lost Origin. And you know, Lost Origin does have a little bit better pull rate for my experiences than what I saw with other sets in Sword and Shield, especially with the Chilling Rain. And so I think I'm seeing good success so far with Lost Origin. I mean, Lost Origin has just been a little bit easier for me to collect. Uh, none of these cards are any cards that I need for my Lost Origin set but at least we're getting hits out of these. I had to do this for science though. I had to weigh them and just see if there was any possibility. But so far, you know, we're not getting all black code cards, which would contribute to the extra weight based off of stuff that I've heard people say. And we're also not getting a bunch of, of hits either out of all of these. So I feel like that's kind of like debunked the can you weigh these? Maybe you can weigh individual packs. We've seen that. There's not much that can be different with the wrapping of the pack. And so it comes down to the difference of the weight of the cards on the inside. And yes, maybe you can weigh those, but I don't think that you can actually do that with the sleeve boosters. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comment section below. This will definitely be the last video because these are the last of my uh, sleeve boosters that I purchased from Best Buy and I don't plan to buy any more unless I have something insane happen with Lost Origin here. We got the Silicone Reverse and we've got the Hisuian Gudra V here. So of course, if we have something insane happen, perhaps maybe I just need to stick with the more recent sets and anything that's older I need to stay away from when it comes Comes to buying from Best Buy. I mean, so far I feel like we're getting decent amount of hits out of the Lost Origin. And I've bought a lot of Lost Origin sleeve boosters from Best Buy and I've had pretty good luck with them. Also with Astral Radiance, I didn't have anything sleeve booster wise that would make me feel like I should be questioning what I purchased from Best Buy. But in this instance, with the last two videos, I definitely felt uh, a need to question what's been going on. We've got the uh, Hisuian Zoroark here, and we've got another Rotom V, which, gosh, I've got so many of those Rotom Vs. We'll just keep going along here. We've got three more Lost Origin packs, and then we've got a bunch of Silver Tempest to go through as well that also weighed more. I think we've debunked that whole as maybe a potential myth. I don't know. We'll see here. I, I feel like I'm getting good hits out of the Lost Origin. Maybe I just need to stop messing around with those older sets that I'm not really collecting. Just because they're good price and Best Buy has a bunch of them doesn't necessarily mean that I need to order them and get them. We're getting down to the final two. This is the second to last Lost Origin and then we've got some Silver Tempest to look at. And this was a Black Border Code card which tends to lead you to believe that you are gonna have a pull. And so I see something out of the back corner there out of this pack. What is it going to be? As we get the Phantom Reverse and we get the Aerodactyl V-Star. Gosh, that's a cool card. That is a really nice card. It's a, a rainbow card, beautiful card. Like I said, I, I'm feeling pretty good about what I am getting out of these Lost Origin packs. And of course, Lost Origin does have a much more decent pull rate than some of the other Sword and Shield series. But nonetheless, I don't feel 
like there are any issues here. And I definitely wasn't able to determine whether a pack was going to have hits or not based on how much it weighed. And I don't think even if I had a better scale that got more accurate that we'd be able to tell either just because there's so much more going on with a sleeve booster than there are with uh, standard booster packs by themselves. So we've got the Spectrier Reverse and that is it out of that. So that's our final Lost Origin pack. Now we're gonna jump into our Silver Tempest and I think we've got, I don't know, maybe about eight to 10 packs there as well that we'll open and see what we get here. These now are the heavier of the Silver Tempest uh, sleeve boosters. So first one that we've got there has the white code card. So definitely not gonna be because of the white code card weighing more, but our packs weighing more for any specific reason. I just don't think so. Here's, we got the Riachu uh, reverse. I don't believe that if we had weighed the Chilling Rain or if we had weighed the Battle Styles packs, that I would have been able to come up with anything. I mean, yeah, I didn't have many hits to begin with, so I don't think we would have seen anything there. I don't think that you can weigh these sleeve boosters, and I feel like there'd be a major fiasco going on if you could at this point, because you can go and buy a bunch of these sleeve boosters, and then you can just go and return them. You could buy hundreds of these, and you can go back and return them, and, and say you changed your mind because they're still unopened, and if all you did was weigh them, and they were weighable like that, then we'd really have some issues on our hands. All right, so we got the Rotom Reverse, and uh, that is it that we got out of that pack. Being that these Silver Tempest packs weighed more, and I'm not getting any hits out of them so far, it's not coming down to weight. So you definitely can't go and weigh these. I mean, even if it was more accurate of a scale, all that would do is give us a more accurate reading. These were 0.1 off from each other, 0.1 ounce off from each other, and if there was a weight difference, the heavier packs should be the ones with the pulls. And we, so far with Silver Tempest, have gotten more out of the lighter pack than we got out of the heavier packs. So hopefully my luck will change here with Silver Tempest. That I think is a risk that you get when you buy sleeved boosters because when you buy a box of something, whether it's a box of booster packs or you buy an ETB or you buy a collection edition or something like that, those are kind of guaranteed to have a certain amount of good stuff in them. My experiences so far is with sleeve boosters and with promo like blisters, that typically have promos and maybe a pack or three in them, those are the wild cards that you might not have as much luck with. And you might have to go through a bunch of those before you have any luck. I don't know for those of you that remember my uh, Scarlet and Violet blister pack video where I pulled tons of value in cards. It's probably my favorite video to date. Up oh, Here's a, a Malamar, uh, Malamar Traders Gallery. And then we have the Yursa Luna V. Uh, so a double hit, which is awesome. So we did get a double hit out of that pack. That's great. The problem is, is that I, I feel like the probability is much less with those types of, of packs, whether it be the promo blisters or these sleeve boosters. It's There's more hit or miss with these and maybe more miss than there are really hits. And when you buy something that is prepackaged, whether it be a box of uh, booster packs or a, a collection series or something like that, you're kind of guaranteed a certain amount of, of stuff out of that. Let me know if I'm, I'm totally off the mark there in the comment section below. Let me know. Hey, look, we did get a hollow out of that, a, ter a Terrakion, Terrakion. I could be completely off base. I don't really know. I'm just going off of my experiences and I tend to pay pretty close attention to things and I have a pretty good memory. So I think that from my experiences so far, the best value for your buck is to buy something that comes complete. And my experiences so far from assuring that I'm gonna get a certain amount of value is buying a box of booster packs. So let's see what we get out of this Silver Tempest pack. Looks like we've got something there towards the back. What's it gonna be? It is, oh, we've got one more card before that. Oh, well, I just destroyed this. Uh, we got the Glalie reverse and we've got the Skunk Skuntank V. So we're, we're definitely doing okay, I think, with the hits out of 
all of these sleeved blisters or sleeve boosters that we have so far feel like these are good. I don't feel like what happened in the last couple of videos. Granted, those are older sets. Battle styles, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not like they're super old. They're from like a year ago. Battle styles and the Chilling Rain Sleeve Boosters, I could have just had a string of bad luck and that could be it. But I also could have bought a bunch of what somebody had returned. I feel like I've debunked the weighing of Sleeve Boosters, but let me know what you think down in the comment section if there's a better way, maybe something else that could have happened that could have resulted in me having such bad luck there. All right, we've got the Terrakion, Terrakion Reverse and Articuno Hollow. So doing okay. Doing okay with these Silver Tempest so far, and I'm liking what I have pulled so far. A couple of really good hits here for the amount of, of packs that we're opening, even though they're from two different sets. I feel like the value here of what I've opened, not dollar value, but I mean the amount of hits that I've gotten uh, pretty good so far. And some of these cards I'm not super familiar with, so I'm going to have to look up the value after we get done with this video and see what we got actually out of like value dollar wise. All right, we got the Rock Rough. Rock Rough Traders Gallery card. Awesome. Another card to add to the collection here, which is great. So this is the best I've been feeling. You know, I opened up all of those sleeve boosters in those last couple of videos. And I I don't know. I mean it's it's videos or well it's it's sessions like that where you sit down and open up a bunch of packs and have such bad luck that you question what you're doing. Your question, why you're even opening these, why you're spending money on Pokemon, why you are collecting because you get nothing out of so many packs in a row and it just feels like the world of Pokemon is against you. But I think my luck maybe has turned here because I've had some pretty good stuff. You got the Dragonite Hollow here. I feel like we've had pretty good luck out of these packs and maybe I'm not stuck alone in the woods anymore with no hits. So I don't know, let me know what you think down below. I just, I keep asking for that because you know, you guys have experience too. And I've, I've had some conversations with you guys, uh, whether it be in the comments or with a few of you in the discord server. And you guys have a lot of insight as well. And I think it's through all of our shared experience that we're able to just better understand what the likelihood of getting, you know, certain cards are. Oh, there we go. Oh, Lugia V. Awesome. That is a nice card. I love that card. Look at the colors. The more that we work together and, and you know, communicate and take part in this community, the stronger that we are. I mean, I know that in the past, Pokemon themselves have gotten feedback on certain things because of low pull rates and stuff like that. And they've made adjustments as necessary. And so it's all being part of the community and uh, just sharing our experiences with each other. That's one of the things that I really enjoy about what we're doing here. Let's keep going. This is our second to last pack out of all of the rest of the sleeve boosters that I have. We've got the Candice Reverse and the Terrakion Terrakion. Uh, hollow. So these are these are all of the rest of the sleeve boosters that I have from everything that I've ordered from Best Buy. I still do think that I'm going to I'm I'm gonna forego the better deals that I'm able to get through ordering and and the credit card points and all that stuff that I'm able to get through Best Buy and just order through my local card shop because the amount of points that I get on my card. The amount of reward dollars that I get from buying all through Best Buy and all of that good stuff and even maybe slightly better pricing is not equaling the amount of card value that I'm getting. I feel like my value in cards is a lot less through what I've ordered through Best Buy. Here's a Dragonite Hollow, Awesome. And we've got the Zubat Reverse. And, and this is decent. This is a decent haul here for these sleeve boosters that I opened, both Silver Tempest and Lost Origin. So let's go through what we got here. We got the Aerodactyl V-Star, the Rotom V, a Mew Max. Um, we've got Trader's Gallery uh, Golden here. We've got the Kyurem V. We've got the Malamar Trader's Gallery. We've got the Rockruff Trader's Gallery. Down here, we've got the Lugia V, the Skuntank V, We've got the Usaraluna, the Yursaluna V, another Rotom V, the Hisuian Gudra V, and the Trader's Gallery Spiritome. 
And so this is a pretty good haul out of those sleeve boosters. I'm feeling better about what we're doing here. Let's continue the conversation down in the comment section below. Head on over to the Discord server, join that so we can even chat more over there and you can share with me some of the cards that you're pulling because with some of my recent luck, I really need to know that you guys are pulling some good stuff. So make sure to head on over there and share photos of some of the stuff that you're pulling in the Discord server. But that's gonna do it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.